Good evening once again to our bright parents. It's another Friday night and you know what time is it? It's 6.30 and it's another episode for our bright parenting. So for our new viewers, uh, bright parenting is a community where we share tips on better parenting as well as better financial management. And tonight we have our special guest, uh, Mr. John Cabrera to share with us the diaries of a homeschooled dad. Doesn't that topic excite you? You know, when I thought of this, I was so excited to know how really do, does a homeschool um, set up work? And you know, and he's a dad and yet he's also very productive at the same time. So what are the uh, objectives that we have for tonight? So uh, let me share that with you. Uh, to our viewers, all right, so, um, there, okay, let me take that out, so, some questions that Jot will be answering tonight is, number one, uh, I don't have the patience to teach, so is it for me? Then, we also have, what about my kid's social life? And of course, how do I know if I'm doing it right? And since um, some of the parents uh, keyed in more questions, some questions include what are the pros and cons of homeschooling and how can a parent manage being productive and being hands-on with kids? And of course, when do you step in as an educator and as a friend? So, um, without uh, further ado, let me bring in our speaker for tonight, Mr. Jo Librero. Good evening, Jo. Hi, good evening, Jen. Good evening, Bright Parenting. Uh, I'm so excited to be here and uh, just uh, really share uh, a bit of my experience as a homeschooling dad. Okay. Let me see. All right. Yes. All right. So, uh, Jen, um, well, you know, we, I know we, we talked before the show um, about, about these questions, but is there anything in particular um, you'd like to, to know about homeschooling and that we can jump off from there. All right. So, wow, those were a lot of questions, Jo. But uh, before that, Jo, how about we get to know you? Like, what is your background? Oh, yes. And the parents are interested to know what, what do you do and how do you manage? Okay. Uh, right now, I run a software development agency as well as a digital marketing agency. Um, I actually started it during the pandemic, Jen, believe it or not. So, <laughs> it's a, the, the, behind that is a long, another story. But um, that's my background. I have uh, 14, at least 14 years of software development experience. I mean to say, I, um, for, for 14 years at least, I helped uh, build softwares for, for different organizations, different companies. And um, so um, this setup, for example, is, uh, I would say, um, enabled me to, to homeschool my kids um, whenever I'm not on, on, at work. Right. So, jo, was it uh, your decision to uh, homeschool the kids or was it uh, Joyce, your wife's decision? And how did you agree on things? Okay, so believe it or not, it's actually my decision. Uh, normally, when, when I meet with uh, other homeschooling parents, they're all female, right? Uh, there are very few men. Um, primarily because of my passion. My passion is education. And um, I, I've seen... I actually met with the guy who, who is the, I think he's the president and CEO of Homeschool, Home, Homeschool Global. Um, his name, I don't know if you know him, Jill. His name is Enric Mendoza. He's the husband oh, of Joy Mendoza. I actually met this, the couple. I met the couple, I interviewed with the podcast. During that time, I was already set on uh, just, you know, um, having the kids go through a regular school. Um, but then I talked to, uh, Joy and uh, what do you call this Edric for a couple of hours and he explained to me like the benefits and kind of that sold me out then that sold me out I was like oh I'm gonna give it a try I know it's not gonna be something that I'm prepared to do but I'm gonna give it a try uh, and and yes um, I tried to convince my my wife my wife was also thinking you know uh, was not 100% with it um, but she said I'm gonna I'm, be, I'm willing to give it a try and we started with when, when my daughter was only three years old. Um, back then, she's, um, she has a play group. And I said to the teacher, like, hey, I'm, I'm going to transition her. And so 
that's 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 a, that's that's uh long story short she's now like six years old and so that means we've been homeschooling her for three years wow it's been three years already and so jo, um how do you like manage time and what does uh what does the curriculum look like and when do you meet with a facilitator how does that work Sure, uh, that's a, a really good question, and and for sure, a lot of you parents who are looking at homeschooling as an option, especially now in in, in pandemic, you might want to you might decide like you know it's there's really no difference with modules and homeschooling, so might as well just go hundred percent all in. Um, the way it work is yes, you have a curriculum, you you know you follow a, a lesson. Uh, there are books that you follow, and you know the way we do it in the house is. It's essentially just sit down with my kids and go through the books. Uh, that's going to be the seat work. But really, homeschooling is more than just a seat work. Homeschooling is really an opportunity for you to share your wisdom, you know, uh, to your kids, and you know, just having the face time, just having that 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 um, that attitude that every day you learn something new and you get to impart that to your kids. And and for all, all of you guys who are who are learners, right? Um, you're going to enjoy this. So all you guys who are um, hoping that you know parenting is something where you can impart your knowledge and experience your kids this is going to be the opportunity to do that and so we do have that um, on a day-to-day -day basis Jen we also have different activities uh, I also th think about what are the, the skills for example like cooking cleaning all these things um, we incorporate that in their uh, I would say day-to-day -day. so you know homeschooling is, is is very unique and it's going to be unique I think for each household outside of the seat work, right? So for example, Jen, whenever I travel or we go on a vacation with my kids, I'll make it a point. We call this learning uh, opportunities, right? So there are times when you say like, look at these kids, look at this sand. Do you know that this sand is, uh, is made of silicate and it can be, uh, you know, molded into a glass, right? And that's, you know, kind of the start of conversation and that's already science, right? It doesn't follow the curriculum. Uh, but then again, we also have a, a set of curriculum. And once, depending on the grade, the age of your kids, um, you're gonna meet, you have what's called an advisor where that person will actually sort of test your kid <laughs> if, oh. if he or she is up to, you know, he is learning or, but more importantly, Jen, is not really just on the acad academic side of it. Yes. Um, more importantly, it's really more of the joy of bonding with your child. Um, I really believe that you have at, you have 12 years of like just to create the baseline, you know, attitude, the baseline lesson and the values. You have 12 years. And for the, that's how I see it. Like now my daughter is six years old. That means I only have six years old where I, in, I can equip her to become a, um, I would say, a ready adult that can help, you know, become a productive member of, of humanity. And uh, that's just how you know, I see homeschooling. Ja, those are very deep uh, thoughts and words and we have our viewers for tonight. Pat says good evening and also we have from Miss Mary Joy Fernandez who greeted us good evening Sir Ja and Miss Jen from Miss Jason as well. So we have our fans in our Bright Parenting community. So Ja, um, do you feel like uh, the kids are more empowered that uh, you, because you are always together or um, do you think like the kids uh, or you would feel like, you know, we have too much time together and we don't get to have our own personal time anymore. So how do you uh, adjust? You know, you know, the kids, uh, the always, and, and you, you know, these parents, bright parents, you know this, your kids always want to spend time with you. They always, up until I think when the, they're the, the teen, teenagers, where <laughs> they want to do their own thing, right? So that's why I said like past 12, 13 years old, they're now trying to explore uh, things outside the household. So that's going to be a different ball game. Of, but but uh, from, let's say, 3 to, to 10, 11 years old, um, you're looking at a kid who really wants to spend time with you. And my guess is they're not going to complain. They're not going to complain that they're spending too much, quote unquote, too much time with you. But I think it's more for the parents, right? Because um, right now, especially during the pandemic, I, I believe a lot of parents are not ready when when they transition to modules, right? We're in their, yes. most of the time their kids are at home. 
Um, some parents consider it as rest, you know, as, as a relaxation time, sending their kids to school, uh, because while those kids are away, they can have personal time. So it's really a challenge. But then again, it, it boils down to, you know, um, it boils down to your why, right? It boils down to why are you really doing what you're doing, you know, and, and how do you really see um, your role as a parent? And, and sometimes uh, we, we actually grow up in, in a situation wherein uh, we're used to outsourcing education, right? We're used to outsourcing education. Sorry. We are used to outsourcing um, education. And, and I think that's what usually is, is the question. Uh, um, like one is because we're used to um, sending, people, sending our kids to school uh, or outside the home, right? Um, the, the shift now, we, we now have the concept of, yeah, we have too much face time. Um, but the reality of the situation is, if, if you think about uh, Jose Rizal, for example, Dr. Jose Rizal, our, our national hero, right? Uh, he's actually homeschooled, okay. right? He's actually homeschooled by her, by her mom, right? So yeah, so if, if that doesn't encourage you, uh, that your child will be a future hero, <laughs> this would be it. But the thing about it, uh, the, uh, the education system before was, it was unique for every child because, and this is what you'll find out when you start homeschooling your kid, you will find out that, that yet your child has a, a different inclination. Now I have two kids, right? I have two kids. So I can see this very clearly that one child has a different way of learning and other child has a different way of learning. Imagine them putting together in one class where the teacher will be facing like 30 of those different types of inclination. And, and you only have one way to kind of evaluate learning and speed of learning uh, you have the danger there of labeling some child who doesn't learn that this way as kind of dumb and slow right and and the good thing about homeschooling is that because that's your child you cannot afford to call your child dumb and slow what do you do as a parent because you love your child so much you go uh, to different highs and lows in order to explain to them this difficult concept and you give them the chance to to blossom and to learn and this is where homeschooling would you know would play out so i i really and that's that's, an, that's some advantage um that that i can see for for homeschoolers or for homeschooling homeschool kids right okay ja we have our first question for the night from miss katrina uh how can we help promote social skills during homeschooling yeah, okay, that's a, that's a really good question, Kat, and, and thank you for asking that. Because in homeschooling, um, I, don't know, I don't know if it's this, this is the same practice before, but, but in, in, when I was younger, Jen, and I'm sure this, this, same, this applies to you as well, right? You, you remember when like, our parents or sometimes our mom would teach us, like, ikaw ha, ikaw luto, or ikaw yung magluluto ngayon, or you're gonna, I mean, you're gonna, that's like social, uh, I would say social skills in a way, but it's a responsibility. But when you when you talk about like how do you, um, so so that's that's in a way like that's that skill in terms of like sort um, day day to day skill. But the other thing, sorry, speaking of social skill, I think you mean um, like basically relating to other kids. Yes. Really, yeah, okay, okay. So so good. That's a that's a good question, and that question is always like the number one question that that's being asked in, in terms of homeschooling, and and. The way I would answer that is this. Um, by the end of the day, it's the responsibility of the parents, whether the child is, the child is going to a, you know, a regular school or a home school, that it's our responsibility to choose the friends of our kids. Would, wouldn't you agree, Jen? Yes. Like the, the level of influence that you want to expose your kids, it's your responsibility, it's my responsibility, right? And so it's the same thing. Um, in, in homeschooling, I get to, I get to, my kids get to hang out with my friends, kids. My friends, I mean, and that, that's usually how we start. Like I would have the other homeschooling parents, right? And I, I would say, you know, these, these, these parents are really nice. So in my mind, like I can, I can have my kids hang out with them, with their kids. And, and you can always, I'm not saying, you know, there's, there's this saying that, you know, you're the average of the, the five people you always hang out with. Right, yes. and and that's exactly what what this setup is all about, right? I get to choose um, who I think my ki my kids should hang out with, and I do the 
I would go. I would I will do that by screening the parents of that kid. That makes sense. Like so because I and and the other thing about homeschooling, by the way, guys, is this ability to is, is our ability to impart you know certain values, right? Um, right? Like what are the things that are valuable to us, Jen? Right? Like for example, what uh, you know, respect, honoring the parents. Uh, what are the other things about that that's, that people value? Uh, managing finances, uh, being responsible, taking responsibility, telling the truth, right? So I believe, and it's my belief, this where as a parent, it's our job. We have 12 years. We have 12 years to establish that, right? And so if we only see our kids, when all things, you know, go back to quote unquote normal, where all the kids will go back to a, you know, like a normal schedule, they leave the house and in the morning and they come back here at, at five o'clock in the afternoon, for example, with all with all that goes back normal um if you're that a parent and you only see your child three to four hours a day right think about that like how do you have a good window to already uh, plant that seed of, of of you know the things that you value in life the things that you want to learn so just think about that um with homeschooling they get to see you for a long time and uh, and and this is what homeschooling is all about okay, guys um, their parents being able to model, being able to model um, what is it or how daddy or how mommy does it uh, when, when daddy's angry, when, when daddy's, uh, you know, working, what, when daddy's like, or, or like, think about that, that all that plays out in you know, homeschooling. So, yeah, I don't know if I've answered Kat's question, but, but yeah, yes. basically you choose, pick and choose your, your kids' uh, friends. <laughs> yes, I agree, Jaw and... I think what I'm getting here is first we get to also meet like on your case draw other homeschooling parents and wherein you realize that you have the same values you'd also like your kids to hang out with their kids so exactly. they grow up uh, and as parents that we model the way right Come yes up. right I mean think about it um, it's we're the same right uh, we actually stick with people who we have this we only have the same values with and that's exactly what we're training our kids to do right um you know there are, there are i'm not saying like uh be um i'm just saying that you know always know that there are people that you want to hang out with more and you want to hang out less uh more with people who are actually like adding to your life and uh, i mean all these things um, as an adult i'll do that and i'm pretty sure like a lot of you guys do that also uh, and then yeah i mean we and we apply that to our kids Wow, Ja, I think we have another interested parent who's thinking of homeschooling her children. Go for it. It's, uh, Jennifer Zeta, who's also a businesswoman, is asking, Hi, Jen. Um, Hi, Jen and Ja, what's the first step if you want to homeschool? Yeah, what is the okay. first step, Ja? <laughs> right, uh, Jen, so that's a really good question. And uh, I'm hoping that, uh, like, you know, Jen, uh, we're, we're supposed to have... Your, I'm supposed to, co to connect with you with uh, with the homeschooling administrator or something like that, but maybe we'll do that in, in a, like another show. But uh, yeah, the, so the first thing that you're gonna do, Jen, um, I'm trying to recall what I did in the beginning. What I did is I actually did the research, and a simple way to do that is just go to YouTube and search for homeschooling, like how to homeschool my kids, and just watch a series of video and try to understand like what they actually do, because uh, some people, some parents, and the funny part is they're thinking homeschooling is like uh just putting a classroom inside your house yes. that, that that is not homeschooling homeschooling is um um making sure that learning is actually part of your household and lifestyle ecosystem right that because you know what here, here's the thing that i, I realized and there's something that that really blew my mind guys if you will train your child to always learn right there will always be constant learning i think and, and not always learn not just constant learner, but self learners. Man, think about that. It's no longer your responsibility alone as a parent wow. to teach your kid. It's now the child's responsibility to seek out more and try to understand more the world, uh, you know, in, in the way that um, he or she wants, and in her style of learning, in her style of, of you know, just, just uh, processing information. So, uh, to answer Jen's question, Jen, I, I suggest you go to just YouTube. There's like a, um, there's different homeschooling techniques. And um, one, for example, is like, um, 
like the regular ones where you go through the books. Uh, the other one is, um, I forget the term, man. If someone here is watching homeschooling, um, where you actually uh, basically more of take your kids out the house and like let them experience. And like the, the learning is like kind of very dynamic, but you still follow like a level of, of uh, or so you still follow curriculum. It's just that the way you express that like learning technique uh, is, is going to be just going out and just looking at uh, nature, for example. And that's where you learn science, uh, relationship with nature, uh, things like that. So there, there's definitely a lot of resources out there. That's, that's how I started. Um, I also read this book uh, called uh, Why You Should Homeschool by Edric, Edric Mendoza and, and Joy Mendoza. So, and, and yeah, um, uh, it, was, it, it was a good primer for me. Uh, but before reading that book, I already watch a lot of uh, videos, 10 minute videos on homeschooling. I, I watch. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And by the way, uh, Jen, so one of the things that, that I actually did was teach my kids uh, how to read and write. So uh, it's not in the curriculum on how to do that. Right. Uh, the, so what I did, I went to YouTube and and Google how to how do I teach kids to, to read and write to read, for example. And I, I learned a, a technique there and applied it to my kid and uh, with my child. And then th that's, how, that's how, that's the beauty of homeschooling. It, it makes you have more hands on to, to your child's learning um, and not just kind of outsource that to, to the parents, to outsource to the, to the teachers, teachers. Nothing bad about that, but uh, what I'm just telling, saying is you will have an extra experience. You will have that bonding time with your, with your son, your daughter, and that's something that's exciting. And you know what? When they grow up, they will look at that time where mommy or when daddy spend time with them. Um, and I'm seeing that with, with my child right now. Right. We have a comment from Clarice Ray who uh, mentioned that um, it's experiential learning. Yes. You know, you I, them out I, of Hi, <laughs> Clarice. Uh, inside a, a, well, a house that's homeschooled. Exactly. Right? Everywhere yes. is their learning environment. The and world so, is your classroom, basically. Right. And Joe, one time we had a discussion on how to have more empowered kids, and I was so amazed by the simple tip that you shared with me. Okay. How, if you could share that to our yeah. bright parents, too. Okay, so, so, so uh, bright parents, this is very important. Um, if you agree that you need to have kids that are, you know, empowered, uh, I mean to say that they can, um, they're, they're empowered to make decisions because by the end of the day, you know, once they're adults, you will, they will make decisions for themselves, right? But when, when do you start? And some people said, when you're already an adult, that's when you start. I believe that they have to practice when they're still kids. And how do you do that? How do you, um, how do you bring out or raise empowered kids? And this idea, um, I forget where I learned this, by the way, but, but this kind of became an aha moment to me. Um, uh, and this, this is the introduction of what's called a micro decision, right? Micro decision. So instead of telling your kids, wear, wear this shirt, right? You can give your child blue, uh, like two, two shirts, the blue shirt or the red shirt. And you can ask them, which shirt do you want to wear, right? And that micro decision alone allows them to make a decision. And now they're no longer just, you know, um, waiting on you to decide, but they're actually deciding for themselves. And that strengthens the resolve, right? That thing strengthens the resolve. Now they would feel that they are now responsible for whatever choice that they will make, right? And, and you, that's when you would realize that, you know what? Like sometimes people, parents would complain, why are my kids not de are so dependent on me? It's because they just didn't have the practice. Why are the kids like, you know, why are my kids uh, not, not so much, or they're, they're you know, immature, man, sila, no? Akong kids, immature, you have one, right? Because they didn't have the practice. So you have, and all, everything, by the way, everything in growth mindset, if you're familiar with this concept, I know we didn't have, the, we don't have enough time here, but if you're familiar with a concept called growth mindset, right, versus uh, static mindset or, or fixed mindset, uh, you realize that everything here is just a practice. And so as early as, you know, as when they're young, allow them to make choices. Where do you want to do? And ask them, what do you want to do with your day? Right? Very simple as that. Like, what is your plan for today? What, it, what, it, what by just asking the question, you're after training them to set some goals. Right? 
And how many adults today don't even know how to set goals? Why? Because they didn't have enough, pra enough practice when they were young. They have to build the skill when they're old already. So, so parents, don't just like tell your, tell your kids, like, do this, do that. You have to do this. You're already doing it. I mean, think about it. Like, ask questions and ask empowering questions. Like, you know, what do you want to do with your day? What's your plan? What's your goal? Right. So think about all these simple questions, and yet it triggers a portion of your of your child's mind to become more responsible kids. And there there is a caveat though; they might make choices that you don't intend to do. But you know, try to play along anyway, because like you know what, my my daughter when I, we started doing that, you know, uh, when she realized that she has the power to pick her own clothes, she would wear princess clothes every day. And I'm like, that's not appropriate, but we just allowed her. And eventually she realized like, ah, when I want to go to a party, I would wear that clothes. But at least she made a decision. And so I'm just, I'm seeing a lot of positive things from that experience. And so that's why I'm sharing this to all, you, all of you bright parents out there. Yeah, and you know, Joe, I applied that with my three-year-old son and when i started giving him choices he began to think more and he began to be more explorative and i really appreciated yes. that advice it seems so simple but when we apply it it's very powerful so i'm also encouraging our bright parents to give the yeah. opportunity to our kids to uh, make simple decisions just like yeah you know, what it's, it's a, wear. <laughs> right simple as that and and this is a kind of type of leadership uh or parenting where it's either you pick a command and control kind of parenting or a empowering type of parenting and by asking questions by delegating choices micro choices to them um i mean that really empowers and you're right jen i think the 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 after effect would be your kids will start using uh, a portion of your mind for decision making and taking responsibility and you know creativity and explore exploration Another comment from Clarice. Hi, our family is also homeschooling. Mom, and cheers to all dads. What Yay. an inspiration for dads to also be hands-on. This is great. So Yes, yes. Yes. And, you know, I've known Jot for the past, I guess, since college. Wow, Jot, that's been 15 <laughs> years, right? <laughs> I actually met Jot's wife first, uh, Joyce. Yeah. And that's how it all started. Uh, thank you also, Jot, for being our Sun Life client. And, you know, yes. we had to have your policy approved. And, you know, just being part of our responsible parenting where we secure our self so that just in case something happens, our kids yes. can continue to live their dreams. Right, Jot? Yeah, that, that's, that's, really, that's really what, I mean, that's really what that embodies what you said, Jen, is this really bright parenting. And you really have to plan ahead. Um, and by the way, guys, and uh, Jen didn't ask me to do this, but I'm gonna do this anyway. Like um, Jen is is a very, you know, he, she's been our, our financial advisor for a long, long time, and uh, you know, she's very good at what she's doing. Um, I, I would say like she's super excellent, and uh, yeah, just talk to her, uh, send a message, because uh, she's amazing. So much jaw and you know we're down to our last two minutes jaw and yes. so it's it fly you know time flew by so fast and jaisal mentioned it's so true good values and the people close to us uh and also from miss mary joy who will be also guesting um on Hi, mary joy. yes Yay. she's also an educator and uh principal and um, she's a school administrator for the past 20 years so we also have uh, another uh, perspective from an educator yes. and a i'm gonna watch that well. one <laughs> yes wow so thank you so much Jo. we learned a lot tonight and uh it's so natural for you indeed you're truly remarkable very smart and you have so much wisdom to share and your kids are wow one day would probably be leading great leaders in our country <laughs> yes and definitely yes. <laughs> not to pressure yeah. them but yeah i yeah. i'm hoping that uh yeah they will they will because you know uh there are kids and they're gonna be future leaders right so yes that, that's our hope right so that's all for tonight for the Bright Parenting community. We'd want to thank you, Jock, for your time. 
My pleasure, Jen. With us, uh, great knowledge. And of course, to our bright parents, uh, next week, our episode, we'll, we have a guest with a mom who has five children with five different personalities. And so wow. that will be uh, Miss Te- uh, Teresita Lim, who is also a businesswoman. She will be our guest next Friday. And uh, uh-huh. last Friday of May, for May 28th, we have Miss Mary Joy Fernandez, again, who's an educator for the past 20 years. So a different perspective on uh, learning styles. So thank you awesome. so much, Bright Parents. Uh, have a great evening, great weekend. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye, Jen.